As you can see, today it's going to be Weapons Day, our first ever weapons episode. Uh, we're glad that you joined us. We hope that you're appropriately armed and dangerous. Let's begin. So, obviously you know that this should be a bow staff, right? A couple little exercises to warm up. It's just turning it, working up your wrist, getting a strong wrist grip. Takes a while. Nobody's perfect. And a couple rolls over top each hand. You go both ways. Then you can do one hand, work it over, work it over. All right, so that's a good way to warm up. Another good way is to hold it and catch it. Hold it and catch it. Works with your reflexes. Fighting stance. First strike is this way. Then you come this way and down. Switch it up like that. Bring it. Boom. Come around. Throw a kick. Bring it back. And you lunge forward. Some of your basic strikes with the bow staff. Won't go into a bunch of complicated stuff yet. We'll start slow and if you have a broomstick at home or a, something you can use before you get a bow staff, it, it works just as well. All right, so first strike, second, straight down, bringing it up, bringing it around for a block. Come back around with a kick and then lunge forward. So now, say hypothetically you're walking down the street <laughs> and somebody has a bow staff and you just happen to have one too. <laughs> all kidding aside. We're all about practical self defense here. Yes. <laughs> um, so one of the basic blocks is a two hand block to the middle. What I like to do is block it down like that, which frees up that. So we'll walk through that one more time. You're gonna block up, roll down, and you see how I step down because I'm using that momentum to take their knee out. This should put them on the ground, which then you have that straight down bow staff. So we'll go through that whole thing. So as you block it, you're gonna roll, come down in the position like this, and you're gonna use that spinning momentum to take them down, and then you're gonna come down like that. Boom, they're not getting back up after that. All right, and the last one is from the side. So if he's swinging it like a baseball bat, you're gonna block it like this, and come in like this. All right, and from here, what I like to do, is plant my stick and throw a big kick. Yeah, yeah, I moved back. All right, so you're gonna block it from the side. Thrust forward. Now, if you're aiming for the ribs or right below that chest cavity area, because that's gonna knock the wind right out of them. And then when you plant this stick, you're gonna use some of that force from your stick to push to give you extra momentum to take them off their feet. So we'll go through one more time. 
So you're going to block it, big thrust, and then big kick. Do it from the other side. Yeah. All right, so from this side. So you're going to block, right? No. Same thing, you're going to roll down, which opens that up. That's going to create the space you need to plant this stick and throw a nice side kick, back kick, whichever kick you decide to throw, you have to put the power to it. All right. Thank you today for joining us, Dragon Warrior Weekly. I am Robbie Page, and I'll see you next time. All right, Sifu Donald Kinney. I'm gonna go over some weapons basics today. Today we're gonna to start with the katana. Katana, you might be saying? I thought this was Chinese style. Well, our original Grandmaster was Grandmaster Daniel K. Pai, who was also a high-ranking black belt in Okinawan and Japanese styles, as well as being from a Chinese Kung Fu family style. So we actually have a little bit of everything, which works out really well for me, since I started out in karate and then switched to Kung Fu later anyway. So, we have some Japanese style katana in addition to our primarily Chinese straight sword and saber. Okay, so let's spread out here a little bit and I'll go over, let me see, let me get you to come around behind me. All right, now in Chinese style, we hold our sabers like this in our left hand with the blade going forward, the back not sharp part of the blade resting against the arm. Right, that way you can kind of march with it the way soldiers would with their rifles. Right, of course, in samurai style, you would have it sheathed with the blade side up, and when you draw it, you would turn so that the blade is facing out, draw it out, and then slice up at an angle. So let me show you that one. Turn out sideways, bring it up this way. Notice I keep the tip pointed forward, okay? What I don't want to do is come like this and then I'm wide open for a counter attack, right? Because if I miss that first strike, I'm wide open, like I said. Now the idea, of course, is to kill them with the first strike. And notice I place the back of the blade against the hand and resheathe. Right? So the idea is that you only need to do one move and then you're back about your business. However, it may not always go that way for you. So now you've drawn, you're here, you can follow up with what we call in Kung Fu stealing a step. Right? It's like a hook stance where you step and the back leg comes behind Right, and I'll drive the tip straight in, okay? Now you can do that with the feet fairly close together if you're not comfortable with standing deep, okay? But ideally, we strike up, we sink the body down, step, step, okay? Strike up, sink, step across, with the left, grab, step through, and thrust. Now when I come back, I'm gonna slice straight down. So this is what you see in Kendo, or Kumie Gumdo, or Heidon Gumdo, the uh, Korean variations. All right, as you see, holding one hand close to the top, one hand close to the bottom. I'm gonna hold more with my middle fingers on this type of sword. The Chinese have a lot of one-handed swords. We're gonna hold more with the top fingers, right? So that would be a difference in grip between the katana and the single-handed saber. Because this is a double hand, we got both hands we're holding from the middle. All right, so we're gonna come overhead. Now, look at my feet here, the back heel is up. 
All right? You want to step with the front foot, slide in with the back as the blade comes down. All right? So, one, two, three. Now I'm going to reverse it. When I go backwards, I'm going to step with the back foot, back, down, down, down. All right? One, two, three, and one, two, three. Good. Now, I'm gonna deflect to the side, right? The less, the more I can cover my body with less movement, the better. And I always wanna have my tip at my eye line pointed toward your eye line, right? Which makes it really handy for practicing in a mirror. All right, so when I come back, see how I sink down here? Like I'm kneeling down, but I don't want to be lazy and actually kneel down. So this is straight horizontal. Boom, again, tip stays forward. Guard, cut. Guard, cut. Guard, and cut. All right, so straight down, horizontal, and diagonal, right? Ideally, diagonal would go straight through the torso. You can also do a small diagonal to the head, right? One, two, three, four, five. Six, okay, or full diagonal. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so that's some basic katana style. Now, when we finish, strike down this way, fling the blood off of the sword. Bring it back. And sheath holster. Yeah, if you got sleeves, you got a lot of blood and guts on there, you might want to like that. And then same thing. Okay, some staff basics. You'll notice most styles hold the three section grip like we were primarily doing with, with uh, assistant instructor Robbie earlier. I wanna show some variations in Kung Fu. So when you're holding it this way, it's called a double-ended pole, right? Because I can strike both ways. I can strike on top of the arm, which is what he showed. With, no, sorry. I can strike under my arm, which was the first move that he showed, and then over my arm, which is the second move that he showed, right? So I can do either one of those in terms of striking side to side. A lot of people like this one when they're tough dudes because they like to toughen up their ribs by smacking themselves with a the stick. All right, so if you're into that, that's cool. If you're not so into that, you can go over the arm where it's a little bit more comfortable coming across the arm like that. All right, so the other grip that we would use in Kung Fu is called a single-ended pole. That's where I would hold one hand close to the end and one hand my arm's length up the pole. All right, so now I've got more of a length of pole that I'm fighting with from my dominant side as opposed to trying to go back and forth real fast and block everything just right, I'm doing more of a keeping the enemy at distance with the long weapon. Okay, so some basic moves with that would be very similar to the sword, how we're gonna come down from overhead. You notice I come into a sideways stance here, right? And my hand in the back pretty much stays around my hip. All right, I can rotate it 
Most of the time, I'm gonna rotate counterclockwise if my right hand is in front because I don't wanna pull their weapon back up into my own face. Right? So if I'm left-handed and I'm holding the stick this way, I'm gonna to have to go clockwise. Right? Makes sense? And we'll, we'll revisit that same concept later when we do more snake techniques. All right, so again, check your distance. Boom, got the staff. Step in, strike down. All right, pull back. And lunge in. Okay, now notice the way he did. You switch, right? So now I've switched my grip again, and I can do the same move from the other side. So that's where in the little routine that he showed you, we actually have a little bit of both flavors in there, which is something that we like to do in our instruction is kind of mix everything up and together. All right, so you got the small circle, right? Another thing that you can do is hook back and drive in. Okay. Hook back, drive in. All right? Notice I get my head out of the way because of what I was talking about earlier. I'm bringing their weapon back towards my own face. But the idea is that when I drive in, I strike the hand that's holding their weapon as I strike through their body. So the idea is that I'm disarming them and taking them out at the same time, or at least hopefully getting one of the two. All right. Good. Now, for balance, Bring it up and down and raise a leg. See this? This would be getting into crane postures, one-legged stances. All right, and down. Switch. See how this hand's still holding under my arm. And back down to the same strike. One. Two, one, two. You see how I have to get quick with my grip change. All right, we'll be right back after these messages. Mr. Kirby here again. Today we're gonna to go over nunchucks. Just some basic nunchuck stuff. Uh, Holden has his wooden nunchucks with him. I have my nunchucks. If you don't have nunchucks at home, which most people don't, you can use a pair of long socks, preferably clean socks. You're gonna be waving them around. You don't want dirty socks to be waving around. So you're gonna take one pair of long socks, put it down inside the other sock. Make sure it's the sock and not nothing hard. That you're gonna swing around and knock yourself out with. All right. But from here, now you have yourself a homemade nunchuck. Boom. All right, and we'll do most of the stuff with the nunchucks, but I'll show you that it can be done with the sock. All right, so first is gonna be a circle going forward. Forward is this way. So from here, your circle needs to go this way. So you're gonna use a lot of your wrist, staying straight like this, and here. And to catch going forward, you're gonna lift your elbow like this, point this, to your armpit and drop your elbow back down. You need your hand to be far away from your body so that you don't catch it on this chain or this, this sock or whatever, the cord, whatever type of nunchucks you have. Because if that happens, it's gonna come back and it's gonna hit you in the head. So make sure that your hand is away from your body and catch, All right? Here, catch. Just do that about 10 times, hold here. Boom, catch. Now, to go backwards, hold. We're gonna swing it backwards, which is this way, so the circle is going towards my back, like this. All right, now we're gonna throw it over the shoulder to catch, because if you go this way, you can't catch, you have to stop and go back this way to go to catch it. So from here, over the shoulder, this hand's gonna be here in front of your stomach. 
and catch. All right, as soon as it comes into your hand, close your hand. So from here, throw it backwards, that's it. Throw it backwards and catch in front of your body. In front of, not behind. Take this hand, let go, bring it in front of your body and catch it like that. Like that, all right? Well, that's good, that's not the way I'm trying to do it. So from here, swing it backwards. Swing it backwards, catch. All right, now the next thing we can do is go from here, let go of the top one, go into the back, switch hands, let go of that one, keep in the bottom one, and just go across. Here, here, here. I call this a figure eight around your body. Here. If you can add a couple circles in there. Boom. And that can all be done with this. So from here, circle going forward, catch. Circle going backwards, catch. Here, catch. All right. Now, we're going to do a figure eight. A figure eight looks like an X. So you're going to go this way and this way. So from here, we're going to start up here, come down like this, come back up to your ear, come down this way. From here, down and down. At first, you can use your whole arm like this, but then I want you to try to tighten it up and use mostly your wrist. All right? Mostly that wrist. So your arm and elbow stay still. You're just using your wrist. You can go faster and faster by just using your wrist. All right? And now I want you to switch hands while you're doing a figure eight. So from here, switch hands. And you switch feet too if you want. Makes it a little easier. Switch hands, keep that figure eight going, like this. Switch hands, back into this hand. Here, switch, switch, keep it going. Hold, let me see, switch hands. And catch. So to catch from your figure eight, you do the same thing here and then here. All right, now we're gonna go around the back. All right, so you're gonna go around your back. So from here, you're gonna take this hand, put it on your hip or your belt if you have a belt. From here, and then this one is gonna do the exact same thing, but on the other side. Here, boom, now it's behind your back, like this. So you're gonna bring it around on this side, now it's in this hand. So from here, keep this hand here now. Here, around, let go of that one, bring it into the other hand. Here, and here. Bring it around to the back, switch hands, and this side, here, here, here. And now we're gonna go around your neck. So you're gonna go from here, around, this way, and catch. All right, and then let go of this one, and bring it around. All right, so we went around the back. From here, you gotta keep your elbow flat, like this. See how it pops up on this shoulder? If it comes down your back like this, that means you're too much of an angle coming down this way. You need to be more flat here so it comes over your shoulder. So here, boom, catch, and bring it around your back. Catch, back, catch, back. And you can go the other way. Catch, around your back, neck, back. And if you're having trouble, you can bend over like this and do the same thing here. Boom, and then it'll come right down to it. Here, boom, right into it. And right into it, right into it. All right, so just to go over everything again, forward circle, catch, backward circle, catch, figure eight, using your wrist, try tracing X, just like this, the X, and then start using your wrist, switch hands, catch, forward circle with your left, Catch, backwards, catch, one over the shoulder, figure eight around the body, around your back, and around your neck. Here, around your back, <laughs> and around your neck. Holding those wooden ones, I have the phone one. Maybe next time we'll switch. So from here, all right, so next time when we do some more advanced stuff, we'll do some tricks. 
So from here, like this, you'd be all right. All right? Suck it up. Click. All right. Again. All right, walk on that hand. Again. All right, so we'll do some tricks, some stuff like this. Where you open your hand up, boop, boop, like this. While you're doing a figure eight, you can do it while it's going back and forth. You can do it while it's going up and down. You can do some throws. Figure eight, boop, boop. You can try throwing it and catch it behind your back. If it didn't work, so we can edit that out. But from here, all this is going to be on the next time we do no shots. Alright, try them at home. But these work just the same. Good job. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Dragon Warrior Weekly. We hope you've enjoyed it. We've enjoyed bringing it to you. Fight stance!